In this video, we will discuss some of the helpful activities that support selectors. We will also gonna take a look on how to manage dynamic data in web pages. I'm gonna show you how to update attributes in UI Explorer and how to use wildcards in updating the attribute values. And we will discuss how to fine tune selectors properly. So let's go ahead and let's dive deeper on how you can further maximize the use of selectors. Let's start with some of the most common activities you can use to generate and find selectors. The first one is find element. This gives you an option to capture an object on the screen and generate full selectors. You can use a variable so you can use the capture data later on. This is helpful when you already captured a top level object and wanted to branch it out into smaller objects. We can search for find element here. Let's type in find. Here, you can see lots of different activities under find category. Let's drag and drop find element in our sequence. Let's inspect the properties of this activity. In the target section, this is where the selector will be generated. Since we haven't indicated an element on the screen yet, the selector is empty. Down here is the output, where we can use a variable and then we can use the data later on. The first thing that we need to do is click on indicate element on the screen. Just make sure that your target object is already pulled up. In my case, I already have the notepad pulled up. So let's click on the editable text. Let's pull up the selector. As you can see, it generated a full selector. In the output section, we can then create a variable we can use. Let me create a sample variable. Let's name it editable text notepad. The variable type should be UI element and we can find it under uipath.core. Then we copy and paste this variable in the output section. So how do we use this activity with other action items? Let's say we want to click the editable text. So we can add a click activity. Then instead of indicating an element, we can just use the output variable of the find element activity. In the target section of the click activity, we don't have to generate a new selector. We can just put the variable in the element field. So that means the variable represents the graphical object where we perform the click action. All right, so here are some of the activities that we can use to support our selectors. The element exists. The process of generating a selector is the same. We'll just need to indicate the element on the screen. But what it does is it will return a Boolean value of true or false. So this is a good activity to use to check if the object exists on the screen or not. Another one is find children. This activity will find if a child element exists on a given UI object. Another important activity that we can use is get attribute. You can also get the attribute of a specific element by using the get attribute activity. Same with other activities mentioned, we can use a variable to pass data. You can indicate the element on the screen and this activity will get the attributes of the UI object for you. Okay, let's dive deeper on how we can make use the power of UI Explorer in web browsers. I have already talked about the basic interface of UI Explorer. Let's now discuss on how we can easily make changes in the selector to fix automation issues. Let's pull up a web browser and let's go to yahoo.com. Let's inspect one of the elements in the web page. Let's click on the image. As you can see, we have two simple lines of selectors, but the UI hierarchy is much deeper. 
It's flexible enough for us to add or delete selectors by just putting a check on these boxes. If we double click on these elements, it will further give us some more elements. These are called children and they can also contain their own children. Here on the right side, this is where we can easily update the attributes of a certain element. I can put a check on some attributes and it will automatically add it to the selected tag. The reason why we need to update the attributes is sometimes this data could change. So we find the attribute that is most likely unique and constant for the selected selector. Another reason is there could be a duplicate item that uses the same attribute. Example, the IMG tag. This attribute is so common and can create a conflict if used with other tags. So we can make the tag unique by adding another attribute like SRC or image source. Speaking of image source, as you notice, there is an asterisk at the end of the image path. If we can inspect the full URL of this image, it would look like this. UiPath limits the number of characters for the attribute value. The remaining text is replaced using one of these wildcards. The asterisk replaces a string of characters, eliminating a long input of characters. Now let's discuss how we can deal with dynamic content. Let's select this unordered list. Let's take a look at the parent ID. Let me copy it and explain later why we can't rely on this. Now I'm going to refresh the page and I'm going to select the same image. Let's get a parent ID once again. Okay, as you can see, it has now a different value. So the parent ID generates a new value every time the page is refreshed. This isn't a reliable attribute to use. To solve this, we can omit the dynamic part of the data by replacing it with a wildcard. So the attribute still works even if there are changes in its values. Another good solution is to add another higher level tag from the hierarchy so that the selector will have a unique path to go through to reach the target object. So any combinations of the strategies I mentioned should help you create a better and efficient selectors. Using wildcards, adding another tag, or adding attributes. This is possible and can easily be done through UI Explorer. To recap, our goal of using selectors is to make sure that our automation works seamlessly without having to undergo a lot of processes while trying to find a target object on a screen. Another way to solve issues with dynamic data is to add another element within the structure. This helps eliminate having to duplicate element IDs. So it will follow a unique pattern from the top level parent and work all the way to the target element. There is no exact rule to follow when selecting the best selector. But using the strategies I mentioned, you should be able to generate effective selectors.